Hi, my name is Mick Budden. Uh, I'm the Landholder Support Officer in the Lower Hunter for Local Land Services. And today I'm here to talk about uh, Sporobolus fertilis, commonly known as giant Parramatta grass. Today I have my uh, good friend Eric Passano, um, the Dungog Shire Noxious Weeds Officer. And he's here to explain how to control and identify um, what's commonly known as giant Parramatta grass. So Eric, why is um, giant Parramatta grass such a problem for local landholders and what impacts does it have on, on their pastures? Uh, here in the in the Dungog Shire, Mick, it's a big problem um, because it invades all the, the native pastures um, and it's a very aggressive perennial grass. It lowers um, production for the cattle, um, there's not as much feed about and it also lowers land values. Um, it also can be a big problem because it's got a high silicon content and it and the cattle if they're forced to eat it when there's nothing else to eat it'll um, wear their teeth away so that's no good for dairy cattle or breeding cattle. So what you're saying is that it, it's aggressive and it, and it takes over your pastures and, and basically creates a monoculture and, and, and not much else can come through. Yep that's right. Um, usually it takes advantage of um, overgrazing and probably small droughts. Um, once it gets established it just chokes out all the other grasses because it, it takes over, it takes all the nutrient out of the soil. Yeah, once it's got its foothold it's sort of like hard to get rid of other than chemically. Mate, so if I was a, a new landholder to the area and um, I thought I might have giant Parramatta grass on my property, there's a bit here, what's the, the best way um, to identify this grass? Well, here you can see as it's probably about um, 1.2 metres tall and it's got a long slender seed head. Um, that's why they call it giant rat's tail grass or giant Parramatta grass. Yep. Uh, as you can see the, the seed on the seed head is continuous and all the way up to the tip of the plant. And um, this is just a single plant here as you can see. Here I've got a native giant uh, Parramatta grass, sorry, a native Parramatta grass um, compared to the giant Parramatta grass, which is obvious as a size, is you can see the flat fan shape here where with the, the native one is just a round little clump down the bottom. It's quite a distinguishable feature there now, the difference between the two. Uh, this bit of native um, Parramatta grass, um, it's quite different from the giant Parramatta grass because it, although the seed head's a bit spent here, you'll notice obvious gaps in the, in the seed head. We're here on the Dungog travelling stock, stock route, Eric. Um, has there been any treatment done in this area previously? Yeah, about five years ago, this whole pasture here, paddock was treated with flupropanate um, as a blanket spray, boom sprayed, and it had quite good results. But let's say in five years now, especially in this top of the ridge country here, we're starting to get a bit of regrowth. At the moment, we probably could do with a retreatment, a spot spray retreatment. The only problem with fluproponate when you're doing broad acre boom spraying is the withholding period, which is up to four months, um, which could be a problem to um, lactating cattle, like as for dairy farmers and also for, for grazing cattle, um, calving cows. So um, once you've done that with a boom spray and it's covered for about three to four years, you only have to do touch up spraying, which is little spot spraying, which only needs a two week withholding period. The main thing is you get the kept correct rates because if you overdo it you can damage some of the native pasture yep. um, so if you do it with the correct rates you'll get um, about 90 100 percent control nearly of the giant Parramatta grass for at least two to three seasons so that's why after five years it's it's time to come back to this site and and hit it again yeah well now you wouldn't boom spray the complete paddock you'd only do patch treatments where that way the withholding period isn't quite as great so if I was a, a landholder it'd probably be good to um, divide your paddocks into sections and, and, and hit your areas that are in, in the most of need of treatment and um, work doing treating a paddock at a time. Would that be the best way of using your fluoropanate? Well that would be you just do let's say one paddock at a time, a 10 hectare paddock or even a 5 or 2 hectare paddock and just doing one or two paddocks every year uh, on a rotation basis so then you can come back and only do um, spot spraying after every two or three years. Because it's got the withholding period so it's actually killing the plant itself and then the next generation the seed in the ground, is, is that the idea behind the flupropanate? Yeah it's a residual chemical which doesn't move much in the soil but stays in the soil and stops as soon as the seed germinates, it kills the germinating and growing seed. Um, 
or per square metre there could be 85,000 seeds so that's a normal sort of wow. seed bank that's in the soil that you've got to try to kill and you can only really kill it with a residual herbicide. Right. So you've mentioned fluoropropanate mate, um, is there any other control techniques that you can use? Say if I was a dairy farmer and I, I just couldn't afford to um, have that withholding period, could you use something like a wick wiper or do some spot spraying? Um, spot spraying with fluoropropanate's right, like I said there's only a two week withholding period but you can wick wipe or spray with glyphosate or Roundup yep. um, which has got no withholding period which is quite safe for all lactating cattle and that. Um, of course the results are a bit slower and only kills a parent plant so you've got no residual control so it would have to be done every year until you get the numbers right down and after that um, just pasture management um, to keep it under control and get competitive pastures to keep it thin. Um, the first place that you'll find your giant Parramatta grass appearing is around the stockyards and your driveways and your laneways in your property um, and if left unchecked from there it'll spread from there in just a few seasons. The grass is spread um, by cattle but I guess a few things that landholders mightn't realise is um, vehicles are also a really good um, way of dispersing seed amongst your property so it's I guess always good to have that vehicle hygiene when when traveling around your paddocks yep make sure that you wash down your vehicle if you're entering a, or leaving a, a, a giant Parramatta grass infected pasture um, also when you're slashing if you've just previously slashed or get a contractor in that's been slashing in a giant Parramatta grass pasture will bring the seed in because the seeds that small sticks to all the little crevices in your slasher and that's how it'll start and it, it's you know it's always good to control these things because um, not only are they a problem in your property, but the seed can blow over into your neighbour's property and infest, you know, nice grazing country. If you think you have this weed or would like further advice, please contact your local council weeds officer or local land services.